first classification of rocks that we're going to be talking about are igneous rocks. And igneous rocks are actually formed from molten rock or liquid rock that cools off and hardens. So when rock gets really hot beneath the Earth's crust, it actually melts it into a liquid. And once that rock rehardens to form a new rock, we call that an igneous rock. And a lot of the time this process can, it can occur fairly quickly if it's up on the surface of the Earth where temperatures are cooler. But igneous rocks can also take long periods of time to form if they're deep inside the Earth where temperatures are still warm. There's actually two different classifications of igneous rocks that we're going to look at. And we can actually classify igneous rocks based on where they cool and where they form and what they form from. So the first classification is actually called intrusive igneous rocks. And these are igneous rocks that are formed beneath the surface of the Earth. The molten rock never reaches the surface of the Earth and it actually cools inside Earth's crust. And anytime there's molten rock beneath Earth's surface, we call that magma, as opposed to lava that would come out onto the surface through a volcanic eruption. We can tell igneous rocks are intrusive based on the crystalline structure of the rock because when rocks cool more slowly, the minerals do have time to clump together to crystallize. So igneous rocks will typically, or rather intrusive igneous rocks, will typically have larger mineral crystals present in them. Extrusive igneous rocks, on the other hand, are formed from lava. And lava is just magma, or molten rock, that reaches our surface. So once it bursts out through a volcanic eruption or some sort of fissure in our surface, it actually changes from magma to lava. Um, it's still molten rock, we just use different terminology for it. But extrusive igneous rocks, because they're on our surface where the temperature is cooler, are able to cool and harden more quickly. And as a result, they'll often be smoother, there will be fewer mineral crystals present because of that slow cooling. Crystals in igneous rocks form as the rocks cool. But we can actually tell how quickly an igneous rock forms based on the size of the crystals. The larger the crystal, we know the rock generally cooled more slowly. And if it's a smaller crystal, or maybe even no crystals present, we know that it cooled very rapidly. Granite's an example of an igneous rock that we can see very distinct minerals in. It's made of three minerals, quartz, mica, and feldspar. And if we look at a piece of granite, the quartz typically will be white. The mica will be a gray to black color and the feldspar will be pink and we're able to see these three distinct minerals in the rock. Some types of igneous rocks are also full of small holes. Pumice is a great example of that. It's got so many holes and air pockets in it that you can actually place it in water and it floats. But these holes are caused by gases that escape from the molten rock during the cooling process. I'd like to look at just a few examples of some common igneous rocks. And the first two that we're going to look at are granite and rhyolite. These are actually two igneous rocks made from the same minerals. However, granite is formed intrusively, rhyolite is formed extrusively. Gabbro and basalt are another example of an intrusive and an extrusive pair of rocks made from the same minerals. Gabbro, of course, has larger crystals, meaning it cooled slowly as an intrusive igneous rock. And basalt is the extrusive version of the same mineral combination. Pumice and scoria are examples of igneous rocks that have air pockets in them. And when we look at a sample of these, we can actually see the holes where the gases came out during the cooling process. Obsidian and periodite are also examples of a combination of intrusive and extrusive. Obsidian being the nice, smooth, extrusively formed igneous rock, and periodite being the intrusive rock with the mineral crystals inside it. Hopefully by looking at some of these examples of igneous rocks, now you have a better idea of how they might have formed and what some of their characteristics might be.